when talking about Faraday's law, we had said that we could show a changing magnetic field or the more appropriately the changing flux of a magnetic field through some sort of a loop of sorts would produce an induced EMF. In other words, change the magnetic field or have a loop move through a magnetic field in some way and you can get a potential difference going through there. And so if you have some sort of a circuit, then you could have current. However, that should be a somewhat weird result. Before it was talked about how a magnetic field cannot do work. And of course, if you have no work, then you can't do power. Now remember that our power equation for something uh, electrically based is supposed to be delta V times I, or perhaps you uh, prefer the version uh, I squared R, where R is the resistance in the circuit, I is then the current. So in this case, if we get a current through there, then, and you have a resistor, then there's supposed to be some sort of power being produced, whether it's heat, if it's work being done, something like that. But this is saying then that somehow we can have a magnetic field do work. It can actually somehow produce power then. So this seems to be a bit of a contradiction if we see it that way. But we could rethink this and realize that what the magnetic uh, field is doing by moving around charges in the wire in such a way is that it's acting like a magnetic field. So let's suppose again we had the idea of some sort of a rod moving through a magnetic field like we did before. So if we have the rod moving along with some velocity v, the magnetic field into the screen here, then the charged particle, if this were a positive charged particle, would be moving downward. And so if the, uh, let's say the rod was initially evenly charged at zero, so that way no net charge on it. Now if any positive charges are going to be moving downward, then here at the base, this would have a net positive charge, and then up here would have a net negative charge. In a sense, what you'd be creating is a, an electric dipole, but also you can imagine that if the top here is negatively charged, and down here this is going to be positively charged just due to the thing moving through a magnetic field, well, that's going to produce uh, like I say, now a mag or an electric dipole, there's going to be an electric field being produced here. So in a sense, when we are moving a rod through the magnetic field, we're creating an electric field. So if we were to understand then this idea of flux change of the magnetic field producing an electric field, then we could be consistent and that way the magnetic field isn't actually doing work, it's producing an electric field that does the sort of work in question. So to represent that sort of relationship, we have a differential equation of the following form. The electric field that you would have over a path length difference ds, little infinitesimal amount, so this would be like the little bit of wire you're going across. If we were to sum up all those little contributions as you go around that path length, that should then be related to the change in the magnetic flux as a function of time. So basically, that would mean that this part of the equation is acting as the potential difference. This is the induced EMF portion produced by the changing magnetic flux with time. So again, basically, if you're summing up what is the electric field along every tiny bit of a segment of a loop you're going around, so if you were to imagine again, you had some sort of loop that charges can move through, and you had it in a magnetic field of constant strength you'd expect there to be a current in this if you were to have the magnetic field change. We'll assume that the 
loop doesn't move around or change in size. So if you change the strength of the B field, then you would have an induced EMF through this thing. You would have some sort of a current going through, and so there'd be some sort of a bit of electric field at each little segment of this loop. Every little point would have some sort of electric field being produced, and if you were to summing up all those little bits of electric field um, in the direction of the loop that you're going around when you're integrating, that should be related then to the change in flux, along with that minus sign from the definition that we had had earlier. And so what this is, is the most general form of Faraday's law of induction. And it's giving us the fascinating result then that changing a magnetic field produces an electric field. Now conversely, of course, we also had it so that a current in some sort of a loop could also, or in a straight line even, could produce a magnetic field. So electrical things can produce magnetic things, magnetic things can produce electrical things. This is going to be a pretty fascinating little result.